you know, we want this to be the first of, of many conversations, something that's ongoing. And I just want everyone to keep in mind that, that we are the revolution, and that's going to become a lot more galvanized as the day goes forward. Um, if you've come to our annual events in the past, you're going to notice the format is much different this year. It's an intentionally a much smaller, more intimate crowd here. You'll see that we've got camera crews in here that's filming. This is going to be the site of our global broadcast. Um, next week is when we're going to have that broadcast go over the internet and be that global broadcast. And then all of our hubs, we've got hubs all be having simultaneous events going on at the same time. So it's super exciting. We have four brand new episodes that we're going to show you today. Um, we went all over the world for those, like I was saying. They're all about igniting a consumer revolution, giving power back to the people with information in ways to make buying decisions that align with their values like they've never been able to do before. So it's really exciting. Uh, we have our CEO, Daniela Howell, who's going to be speaking later about a new program that we're launching, the Land to Market program. Um, and then some housekeeping. These are our hubs here that are going to be doing events. So if you know anybody in those regions, let them know. That's next Friday. Um, this is the broadcast stuff that we've going on, uh, the program that Daniela is going to be talking about. And then, you know, we're just really blessed to be in this amazing space. I've heard from so many already this, this morning how much you're enjoying E-Town and the hall. Um, so I am, uh, have the, the benefit and pleasure of inviting Nick Forrester on the stage. He's the, the founder of this amazing space. And he's going to tell you a little bit more about all the cool things that they're doing here, uh, which really aligns well with our mission, which is why we've just been so blessed to be able to find this space and work with them. So I'm going to pass it over to Nick here. Thank you, Chris. Will I block your shot at all here, if you're going to pivot? <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, and uh, good morning. Welcome to E-Town Hall. What a beautiful uh, sort of alignment of values. I'm so glad you're here, uh, ready to learn more. I'll just tell you briefly about this place. E-Town started as a radio show in 1991 based on two simple ideas. One, that music brings people together like nothing else. And two, we can all do a better job of taking care of each other and the planet. So that was the foundation of E-Town. We launched on NPR in 91 with about 40 stations. We now are on about 300 stations every week. We've had a combination of music and speakers um, since we started. And it's a, it's a reflection and a product of our our values and the things we care about. And it's great that we've been able to sort of manifest those values here in this building. It's an old church that was laying fallow. It's now got 56 kilowatts of photovoltaic panels on the roof, lots of reused material during the reconstruction and demolition. Um, and what it's become is a, essentially what it's always been. This building was built in 1922 as a place for people to come together around shared values. In that case, it was the, you know, that particular congregation that built the church, but what's happened since we've reopened E-Town Hall is that lots of groups like this have found home here, not only because it feels good, it's in downtown Boulder, it's aligned with, you know, there's a sense of common purpose, um, but it's also a multimedia facility. We really built it that way. It's got a recording studio in the back. We're wired for live streaming video and fiber optic throughout. The bottom line and the main thing I just want to share, because there's a full program today, is that uh, I have been inspired so many times by the guests we've had on E-Town. I've interviewed uh, many, many people, but one that I remember just in context of this conversation was, uh, I think in 1992, I interviewed an author, William Leasteat Moon, talking about uh, Tallgrass Prairie in Kansas and how there was an opportunity to look at it differently. And he took a particular piece of ground and wrote a book about it. And Ever since I read that, because I have been a touring musician for about 40 years, and we used to just hate Kansas. <laughs> I mean, Kansas, God, Kansas was the obstacle to the next gig if you live in Denver. And so I say that only just because it's an example of what can happen when you have a little more information, you have a little bit of uh, new perspective, and it can really change how you perceive both your environment and your relationship to it and the context that we find ourselves in now. So I'm sure that's what's in store for all of you today. Meanwhile, if you want to learn more about E-Town, there's a little uh, smartphone app you can get or you can talk to anybody, the people, who are the, the fine crew and volunteers. Have a great day 
and uh, thanks very much. Thank you, Nick. Um, with that, you know, I want to share that, that I'm honored to work for a, a really amazing woman. Uh, she's become a, a close friend of mine over the last three years while I've worked at the Savory Institute. I know she's uh, a close friend to many of you in the audience, and so it's with great plot, pride and pleasure that I get to invite to the stage Danielle Ibarhal, our Savory Institute CEO. Thank you. Am I hooked? I brought my notes, but I didn't bring my glasses, so <laughs> I'll be totally in memory here. Um, I want to thank all of you for being here. I know there's a tremendous amount of investment, of resources, and your precious time. So we want to um, uh, thank you. Thank you deeply that you have carved this day to share with us what we believe is a very, very important conversation. And hope, hopefully, we'll make it very worth it for you. I want to thank also uh, the Healy Foundation that has gifted us with the resources that we needed to send these guys around the world and capture the stories that we'll see today. And a lot of other sponsors that you will see in the programs that have made it possible for us to be here. I want to also thank Epic Provisions for having supported and pushed us to be thinking of bringing market partners into the conversation around the work we're doing. So thank you very much. Taylor is here today. Taylor and Katie, you, you, Katie, you, you rock, really. Thank you very much. Um, and I'm extremely pleased to be in this venue. Isn't it amazing? Does it feel great? Yes. It feels so good. And I, I don't know if it, I think the Nazarenes used to be here, right? Is it, you, you told us the Nazarenes. And I'm not sure if it's the Nazarene energy or your energy or both. But for me, it gives me a tremendous amount of satisfaction that we have aligned our choice as a consumer with those values that we hold so, so deeply, that we, we, we really are contributing to that reality that we want to see um, be um, in our world to be. So for us, I'm very grateful to have found it and to ha have learned about it, because if we hadn't known of it, and we knew E-Town was here, but we didn't know the specific, the details, it's a neutral, carbon neutral facility. It has all this high tech, but all this soul is soulful. And it just feels that this is, this is really a contribution as a consumer to the type of spaces we, we want to support. And that is the main thing. When we make a choice, there's tremendous power in the consumer choice. We're sending signals. And those signals inform other choices, other people's choices. And those choices have tremendous amount of impact. And sometimes we go a little bit blind about the choices we make. And once you find out, you cannot not see it anymore. And now I haven't been able to shop for clothes since we started in this revolution. I'm like, no, no, no. And it's, it's, it's really um, part of, of that work that we need to do to get into um, this new space of, of conscious, conscious consumerism, <laughs> if, that, if that exists. Um, so um, we are together here igniting a consumer revolution. This is a revolution that is a different type of revolution. First, it's a peaceful revolution. Um, and there's too many shallowly informed um, revolutions or activism that even though they are well-intentioned, they, they do more harm than good. And so for us, this has to be an informed and educated revolution. Simon Sinek, author, says, um, you can start a revolution the moment you know what you stand against. And we sort of know what we stand against. We stand against a model for agriculture that is obsolete. It served its role, it was, had its time. Now we know the consequences. Uh, it's depleting our soils, it's eroding our ecological wealth, it's destroying culture and, 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 and community, and it's contributing to climate change. So that is what we're moving, what we're standing against. But Sinek continues saying, for change to last, for good change to last, we not only need to know what we stand against, but we need to know what we stand for. So a little bit of that vision of where we want agriculture and the production of food and fiber to live. And luckily for us, we have plenty of examples of that. 
through our network of holistic managers around the world. Many of you are here, many of them are here. And we will use the power of story uh, to, to paint that vision of where we want agriculture to live. And story can change the world, it's very powerful as well. I think many times people need to see a video on Peter Bick, he's not here unfortunately, uh, but he put together some really good videos that people went, oh, that's what you mean with holistic plant grazing, that's what you mean with holistic management. And it takes people to engage at a different level, more emotional, more visual, you know, engaging our senses to understand what we're talking about when we talk about the proper management of livestock on the grasslands of the world. And so we're using that power of story uh, to do that. And here are some of the innovators and early adopters um, that we wish were many, many, many more, some of them very young in the audience, <laughs> like you, like Bill and Gunther, and that are the hope for, 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 for our future. Right? I think as consumers, most of us will have the biggest impact on our environment via our choices of food and fiber, and not, not by our actual interaction with nature. Um, unfortunately, we've been separated. We need to integrate. We need to learn more. We need to understand more what it takes to um, grow our food and our fiber, and what it takes to do it right. So, um, as my colleague um, Trey Cates says, uh, to create abundance, there is the need of persevering work. So what I want to set the stage today, this is not a quick fix, this is a journey that will require a tremendous amount of commitment in terms of how much we learn, how much we work, how much we day in and day out invest in creating this ideal vision in making this revolution a reality. And I have some words here that I cannot read, but <laughs> I was thinking relentless work. Persevering is my friend Trey Cates. Persevering and intelligent are his words. Relentless, grassroots. It has to be grassroots. Um, it has to be organic. It has to be committed. It has to be discipline informed and compromising and loving. The journey will be loaded with obstacles and struggles. We will hear about some of them today as we look at the supply chains of the livestock industry. Many obstacles to overcome, but oh, so much fulfillment if we overcome them, right? That is where the fun is in, in figuring out creative and innovative ways to work through around over those obstacles to create this reality that we want to see. And um, that is why I believe we need the spirit of the entrepreneur to make it happen. And uh, because they are innovative, they are quick learners, they, they are uh, quick to, to learn and quick to change if need be and never ever give up. And I think that's what it will take. And the good news is, that's exactly the profile of the leaders of the global network and the holistic management practitioners in our network and all of you here today. We're not willing to, to give up. So we have what it takes to begin cooking this amazing recipe. Wendell Berry, and now I will need my glasses, so we'll give it a try. Wendell Berry says in his agrarian essays, um, the environmental crisis is uh, not such thing as um, it's not a crisis of our, of our environments. It is a crisis of our lives as individuals and as citizens. We have an environmental crisis because we have consented to an economy in which by eating, drinking, working, traveling, enjoying ourselves, we, we are destroying our natural world. But he also says, the care of the earth is our most ancient and most worthy and after all, our most pleasing responsibility to cherish what remains of it and to foster a renewal is our only legitimate hope. So I want to give you hope, so I'm going to challenge all of us to take responsibility, to take the pleasing responsibility of beginning to make decisions about what we wear and what we eat and how we enjoy ourselves in ways that regenerate our land, 
our ecological wealth, ourselves, our health, and our climate. So with that, I want to wish you that you enjoy the beautiful stories that have been um, filmed here to share with you today, that we learn from the discussions that will follow, and that we all leave a little bit more amazed and inspired and with more awareness and commitment to put some action and habit, new habits in place to create this new agriculture we want to see. So with that, I'll leave you to enjoy the consumer revolution. Let's ignite it.